Guys, have you thought about making the jump to a gaming PC? Listen, don't get me wrong, I love playing on consoles, but there is a beautiful thing that happens the first time you get that first PC. When you take your favorite game and amp every graphic settings to max, you get to see the world in a way that you never thought possible, at frame rates that you never thought perceivable. And there's no better PC company to partner with than that of Starforge. We have been using Starforge now all year. Their PCs are hand-built in Austin, Texas by experienced builders who are passionate about what they do. All of their systems come with a full two-year parts and labor warranty with a variety of systems that will fit right in your budget with in-house financing, by the way. Now, brand new to Starforge Systems, all Voyager PCs will come with the Starforge Systems plate lights, two acrylic inserts for the plate lights, and an additional two terabyte NVMe, which is a hell of an addition. Best of all, your PC arrives fast. I received mine in less than a week, and we've been in love with it. Star Starforge is the real deal. And if you're interested in upgrading your setup or you just want to see what Starforge has to offer, feel free to check out our link down below in the description. Big shout out to Starforge for sponsoring today's video. What is going on with Unity? Unity Technologies released a blog post announcing a change to their pricing structure and starting on January the 1st, 2024, developers will be charged a set fee for every installation a user makes of their game. Now, as soon as this announcement was released, Unity developers were furious. Twitter became a war zone and never before have we've seen so many veteran users turn on a company this fast. Overall, guys, we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. This is a very complex issue. I'm sure the repercussions will be just as elaborate. Well, 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 just when you thought the Unity case was closed, yesterday we received a new development that may change everything. For the sake of brevity, we're going to assume you know most of what took place in early September regarding Unity's change in pricing structure for game developers using their platform. If not, I highly recommend you pause this video and watch our full breakdown of what transpired. We'll have a link to that video down below in the description. Now, since that video and the initial waves of news about the Unity disaster, many people just assumed that this was the end. Nothing you Unity could do would ever redeem them in the eyes of the public, and more importantly, game developers. However, since then, Unity significantly walked back their price change policy. On September 22nd, Unity published an apology and made the following changes. For those using their personal plan, no runtime fees will be charged. Users would not be required to use a Made with Unity splash screen, and the revenue cap would be raised from $100,000 to $200,000 before you need to upgrade plans. Now, this much closer resembles the original personal plan, but with more benefits, so a big win for hobbyists and solo developers. As for the pro and enterprise tiers, the Unity runtime fee works the same as initially proposed, but developers can either opt out and pay a 2.5% revenue share or stay on their current version of the Unity software and remain under the previously established conditions. Now, this applies to any current or released projects as well. All data is self-reported and will not be collected by Unity. Also, if a developer keeps track of both Unity runtime installs and the 2.5% revenue, revenue share, Unity will charge the lesser of the two amounts, so you don't have to commit to a pricing structure. Again, these are good changes. And yes, the price is going up for developers, but this isn't rewriting contracts like Unity was trying to do before. Current developers aren't getting the rug pulled out from under them, and if they want to upgrade Unity, they can, but nothing they currently have will cost them more money. Now, this is where the story in it, until yesterday's big news. John Ricitalia, the CEO of Unity, as of a report on October 9th, is immediately stepping down as president. CEO chairman, and member of the board of directors. Now, believe me when I tell you, this is a big deal. It's not often that you see changes on an executive level after big controversies, at least in the gaming space. Just look at Blizzard. They may have the worst track record when it comes to corporate controversy. Yet Bobby Kotick, the CEO, who we know is involved with the sexual harassment that took place at Blizzard, has seen zero consequences for his actions. Unity's report goes on to say that James Whitehurst will be appointed and has been appointed interim chief executive officer, president, and a member of the board, lead independent director of the Unity board, and also appointed chairman. Now, Whitehurst has a background at IBM and Red Hat, both IT professions, where he held positions as advisor, president, and CEO. On the surface, this already sounds much less concerning than Richitello's background with EA. Now, despite this announcement, Richitello is not completely out of the picture. He will be advising Unity as a search for a permanent CEO. How you like that? Advising. Now, obviously, this is a cost for 
for concern, even with Richatello leaving his position, if he's a direct influence in choosing his replacement, then does the spirit of the company really change that much? It's a very hard question to answer. A lot of the blame for these changes to Unity's pricing model fell on the head of Richatello, who, let's remember, had been serving as head of Unity for nine years. He may have been partially responsible for the proposed changes, but Unity only went public in 2020, meaning pressures from outside investors to make more money. There are a lot of names on that board of directors who don't have ties to the gaming industry, and each and every one of them may also be responsible for the Unity runtime fee. It isn't helped that a good portion of Unity's leadership has been with the company for less than four years. Now, I'm inclined to believe that Richitello may have been only part of the problem, and if you only get rid of part of the problem, it's not really the solution. It's mitigation, or in this case, damage control. Many of you are aware that Richitello sold Unity stock before this change was announced, but did you know it was only 1.5% of what he owns? Per Jason Schreier on Twitter, there's been a ton of misreporting on this, but Richitello has actually only sold about 50,000 shares of Unity stock this year out of the 3.2 million he owns. So guys, just answer this. If Richitello is still heavily invested in Unity, what's a better move? Do nothing and hope public opinion gets better or become a scapegoat. Step down from your position and build back more trust with business partners and developers. And this isn't a major hit for Richitello economically. This may actually save him money in the long run. He benefits most if Unity makes more money. And of course, if share prices go up. And if that means he needs to take a step back and it buys, then where's the downside here? What I'm really trying to say here, guys, is don't be surprised. If at any point in the future, you'll see this guy ride back in in another high level position with a different company, but at the same time, very much still involved with Unity. So is this good for Unity? Honestly, guys, I don't think so. The damage was already done, yes. They walked it back and arguably most of it, if not all of the issues people have with the pricing changes are gone. But don't believe for a second that Richard Taylor stepping down is a gesture of goodwill or Unity doing a 180, getting rid of the bad apples to save the bunch. No, this is a calculated move to keep them in conversation, to win back trust, and maybe even put in a new CEO who will more easily bend to the will of the major shareholders. Who knows? All we can do at this point is speculate. But I wanted to give you guys an update on this, on what's going on and my thoughts on the whole situation. I am glad that Unity developers are not getting screwed at this moment. But at the same time, guys, I don't believe Unity is quote unquote saved. Unity learned their lesson for now. But if I was a developer and I was in this position, I would really be thinking long and hard on what development platform I want to build my future on. Just my thoughts, guys. Y'all let me know in the comments below what you think. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.